Hello, my friends, and welcome to Five for the Future for this week, the week of August 12th. Let's jump into the five topics that stood out to me recently as signals of change that could impact your small business. Where do you get started? Here are our five topics for this week. The Olympics, childcare, retirement, Gen Z at work, and Elon Musk, business versus personal? All right, let's start with our story number one, the Olympics. Uh, unless you've been hiding under a rock recently, perhaps you know that the Summer Olympics took place in Paris just recently and wrapped up uh, just the other day. I won't get into the amazing feats of athleticism. Did you see the break dancing? Because uh, we're focused on business. So what are the business stories from the Olympics in Paris? First, I love that the furniture in the rooms for the athletes was made of cardboard and will be repurposed and easily transported and then recycled. On top of that, their mattresses were made in part from recycled fishing lines and the chairs were made from recycled bottle caps. And the aquatic center that hosted diving, water polo, and more was partially heated thanks to emissions from a nearby data center. Way to be sustainable, Paris. In more ominous Olympics news, AI was used to monitor footage from closed circuit cameras since humans couldn't possibly handle that volume of surveillance footage to capture any concerning activity. Yes, the event was safe, and yes, they captured tons of faces that could be used for training AI in the future. Technology was also involved in the design of the clothing and the shoes of the athletes and in the measuring of all the competitive activity of the athletes. So what does this all mean for you and your small business? Two key themes that stood out to me were sustainability and innovations in technology. What is your business doing to address these themes? Will you have made progress between now and the next Summer Olympics? What might the future look like uh, based on this? Um, well, just like NASA's mission to the moon inspired all sorts of new products back on Earth, the Olympics has inspired a lot of innovation from the furniture to the swimsuits and running shoes to the high-tech measurement of their activities. And those things could filter down to impact our daily lives. So think about that. All right, moving on to our story number two, child care. Uh, a recent survey showed that businesses that offer child care benefits not only have happier employees, but they also have improved recruitment and retention, ultimately leading to better growth for the business. Uh, conversely, the lack of childcare is preventing over one-third of small businesses from maintaining or growing their business because employees are forced to cut their hours or leave their jobs if they can't find affordable daycare. Small business owners would like to see more government support connected to childcare op options. Unfortunately, our polarized political situation ensures that nothing will get done at the federal level. A business tax credit to help fund childcare would make a huge difference, but it doesn't seem to be a priority right now for either party. So what does this mean for you and your small business? Small business owners are still able to offer flexible spending accounts to provide reimbursements for childcare expenses, and they can receive tax credits to help pay for a childcare center or partner with other small businesses to share the expense. So there are some options out there. Data shows that a lack of childcare is preventing small businesses from expanding and keeping employees from being as productive as they could be if this burden was better addressed. Consider how you might be able to make things easier for your employees with children. That investment could have an impressive return to your bottom line. So what might the future look like? I'd like to imagine a future where we have flexible work options. Wait, many of us do have that already but also a better solution to childcare and new parent leave. Losing a key employee temporarily when they become a parent is a huge burden on a small business, but a necessary one to retain key employees. More support from the federal government might make this situation more bearable for the owners and the employees of small businesses, but I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> and with that, let's move on to our story number three, retirement. Did you know that 11,000 baby boomers turn 65 every day in 2024? That's a lot of potential retirements in one year. And more than half of private businesses in the U.S. are owned by people over 55, according to the Wall Street Journal. That's a lot of succession planning that should be taking place. And a lot of wealth built up in retirement savings among all those boomers. Over two-thirds of all U.S. household wealth is held by people over the age of 55. 
Meanwhile, many younger boomers are discovering they can't afford to retire with no pension and limited retirement savings. And it doesn't help that the insurance lobbyists are working to push back against potential new regulations that keep financial advisors from recommending investments that pay high commissions, even if they hurt their retiree clients. So what does this mean for you and your small business? Retirement among small business owners and their employees is complicated. How do you handle the loss of a longtime employee and all that knowledge in their head if they decide to retire? What does retirement look like for you as an owner? And who decides when the time is right? There's no board to intervene if your mental faculties are slipping, and it's hard to let go of something that you built yourself. A 2023 study concluded that the older a CEO becomes, the worse they are at their job. How can you make sure that you are not the main problem at your business? It's time to start planning. What might the future look like? Let's start optimistic. Check out Forbes' list of the best places to retire abroad in 2024, which includes 24 countries and 96 beautiful locations. Did you know that over 700,000 Social Security recipients live outside of the U.S.? And that number continues to go up. Now think about your future. What does retirement look like for you? What do you want it to look like? And side note, do you have any job openings for those over 60 who didn't save enough to retire just yet? A few things for you to think about. <clears throat> All right, moving on to story number four, Gen Z at work. Back in the tech heydays of 2017, 2018, every graduate wanted to work for a giant tech firm complete with huge salaries and cool benefits like ping pong and free dinners. But things have changed post COVID. And what mattered then matters less now. Top industries for graduates now are healthcare and government jobs, thanks to the stability of those employers. If members of this generation find a place at your business, bear in mind that they are particularly anxious and sensitive, so make sure you provide ongoing positive support. And if you have some constructive criticism to give, be clear to explain that the feedback is motivated by an appreciation for their potential so that they can be better moving forward. Also, maybe avoid corporate jargon as Gen Z refuses to, as Business Insider says, circle back or get their ducks in a row. They don't appreciate feeling like an outsider when the older employees know all these buzzwords and they don't. What does this mean for you and your small business? Well, it pays to be in touch with the likes and dislikes of your potential workforce. And Gen Z is older than you think. Many are in their 20s and they're in the workforce. Don't be basic. Be clear with your expectations and ask for theirs and things will be so cash. Okay, Boomer? <laughs> so what might the future look like? Just when you figured out Gen Z and their anti-buzzwords and their own slang, along comes Gen Alpha, ready to enter the workforce. The oldest are already 14 years old, and according to Fast Company, they are seeking careers that are flexible, personalized, and experience-based. But really, aren't we all these days? Perhaps we're not so different after all. All right, in our final story, story number five, Elon Musk business versus personal. Does it pay to mix your business with your personal beliefs? If you're Elon Musk, you're rich enough that you just don't care. You don't care that EVs made up over 25% of new car sales in California, even while Tesla sales were down 24%. You don't care that you're actively supporting a presidential candidate that does not support EVs or government subsidies for EVs along with a party that dislikes your product. You don't care that your social media company lost roughly 40% of its revenue after you took over and continues to lose advertisers. But maybe you do care that your rival Mark Zuckerberg's meta is seeing a big jump in ad revenue at the same time that you're seeing a decline. <laughs> so what does this all mean for you and your small business? All right, I'll admit, this topic is somewhat for the entertainment value, but hopefully it also serves as a message to small business owners. Your priority should be your customers, and your employees. There's nothing to be gained in ticking them off by cursing them out or treating them poorly. And perhaps best to stay silent when it comes to politics in what feels like a very divisive world today, but I will add in which we actually all agree on far more issues than we disagree on. So what might the future look like? Will Elon Musk continue to benefit from government contracts with SpaceX or tax breaks with Tesla? He's received billions with a B, billions of dollars in government contracts and subsidies, but it's not clear if that would continue under a different president. Do your current actions or words risk an impact on your future bottom line? I sure hope not. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope these five topics and my take on them got you thinking about how these signals of change could ultimately impact your business. 
Join me again in two weeks. Thanks.